Hello and welcome to Cannabis Talk 101, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. My name is Blue, alongside of me is Mr. Joe Grande, and you are now tuned in to the greatest cannabis show on the planet. That's right, you guys. Thank you for listening to our podcast all around the world, and make sure you check out our website, CannabisTalk101.com, as we have so many great articles and blogs on the site for you to check out, and make sure you also give us a call anytime, 1-800-420-1980, and go check out our IG pages at Cannabis Talk 101, my brother... From another mother right next to me, Blue is at the number one, Christopher Wright. Hello. Well, I'm at Joe Grande 52. And the Bear Flag Group, you guys, if you're looking for a white label, they're your white label partners. They're known to be on time, accurate, and do quality co-packaging. They have been launching brands in California since 2015. And at the Bear Flag Group, they do what they say they're going to do. Go check them out online at bearflaggroup.com. Yes. Our guest today... From the vertically integrated cannabis company, Glasshouse Brands, who have actually won four Emerald Cups. You know, so they're official, baby. We have the co-founder and CEO, my buddy, Kyle Kazan in the building, who was a point guard, you guys, <laughs> at USC, served as a teacher and police officer all over Southern California before he started be becoming the real estate tycoon that he is. His portfolio spans the three different continents, commercial properties, of course, residential across U.S., China, and Germany. Plus, we have the president and CCO, who has been with the company for seven years now, Graham's in the building graham is a serial entrepreneur and as uh, was part of the founding team which i found very interesting at sonos which wow. is a major company you guys and major brand i wish he'd lace us up with some of those where he was involved <laughs> with product design development and customer support he ventured into the regulated cannabis industry by founding elite garden wholesale in 2014 an agricultural technology company focused on developing products for the hydroponic industry he then opened the first 21 and over cannabis store in Santa Barbara in 2019. Now, Graham has been in the game for over 25 plus years. His list of products includes Glasshouse Farms, Field Extracts, Forbidden Flowers, Mama Sue, and his storefronts include the Pharmacy SB, Pharmacy Berkeley, Pharmacy Santa Ana, and the Pottery. Make sure you check out the big company, though, online, GlasshouseBrands.com, or on IG, Glasshouse Brands. Welcome, you guys, Graham and Kyle, to the building. Yeah! Thanks a lot for having us, guys. We're no happy. doubt. You know, I like to give those big intros because people need to know exactly they who we're to talking know. to rather than just some, you know, geeks off the streets up here. Kyle, it's great to have you back on the show set yeah. with us. You've been in the news quite a bit. Quite a bit of some slamming, quite a bit of some hype and some like, look what the company's doing. But for the most part, I want to get into the company Glasshouse Brands. You guys are by far one of the biggest, if not the biggest cannabis companies out there. How are you able to sustain this, Kyle, and do this? And how is it looking for the company right now? So number one, thank you guys, uh, Joe Blue, for having us on. I for mean, sure. it's rare that Graham and I ever do something in person together because he's up in Santa Barbara, Camarillo. I'm down in Long Beach. So it's really an honor. And obviously, we know that you guys, Cannabis Talk 101, it's one of the biggies. So we really wanted to be here. So thank you. Thank you. Um, in regards to running this, this company, you know, I would tell you it's like sort of uh, holding onto a tiger by the tail in, in a lot of ways. When we saw this farm, the 5.5 million square foot farm, it's the second largest greenhouse facility in America, any product, not just cannabis. And so we said, whoever gets this is going to have an advantage. And if they do it right, we'll be able to bring the best quality cannabis at the best prices for the people. And that's the only reason we're public was that was the only way we could raise the money to do it. The nice thing about being public is, you know, I think all cannabis public companies are cheap. And so if someone wanted to invest, they just get a Charles Schwab account and they can invest a little bit of money into cannabis. And we're the only publicly traded cannabis company that I know of that actually holds an in-person annual meeting. So if you're a school teacher like I was or a police officer, you're, you know, you're doing your thing. You actually can buy stock and then come up and, and tell the C-suite to go fuck themselves. We're <laughs> screwing it up. And the idea that we could have done that was I was in a teacher's lounge, never came. But I to all those folks that would put money in with us, right now I think we're trading about three bucks. So for less than this, you could be a shareholder and, and tell, yeah. come on up, tell me to go fuck myself. Yeah. <laughs> Which no, some I, people I'm sure do. <laughs> <laughs> do people do people jump on and, and actively, you know, get involved? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, and, and on that uh, that uh, shareholder meeting is talking about, like, it's at the farm. It includes a full tour. It's the largest cannabis greenhouse in, in human history, as far as we know, in the universe. So to be able to come, I mean, if you are if you love weed like we do, it is Willy Wonka's factory of weed. Like, it is beautiful. The plants are healthy. healthy. It's all sun-grown. We have amazing automation. We use a ton of technology. We've got a great team. It's like, it really is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. So I uh, highly recommend people getting on board and participating and coming to check that out. Yeah. It is really cool. Graham, where are you from originally? Uh, I'm a Santa Barbara guy, so that, that's where I grew up. That's where our first farm for Glasshouse Farms was about seven, eight, almost eight years ago now. Uh, Kyle and I partnered on that first 150,000 square feet. We thought it was the biggest thing that we could even conceive of for sure. weed, and at the time it, it was, and it you know it consumed my entire life. Plants don't care. They'll die on Easter. Like You got to always be there for them. We liked how that was going. We bought the second farm also in Santa Barbara. It was 350 thousand square feet we were convinced that was the biggest thing in the world now with what we're doing you could take both of those farms together and they would fit in our nursery alone down sure. at our farm in Camarillo so meow where, where'd you go to college <laughs> now, now <laughs> you're gonna start asking qu questions like that right meow <laughs> do I look like a kitty nimbly pimbly who's winning in the cat game yeah. <laughs> damn it he just took it from us yeah, for anybody who doesn't know super troopers check it out it's meow's the time to get this uh, get this right meow's I love the time it yeah. meow get serious, serious. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right I went, now. yeah, I went to Santa Barbara High, and you know that's actually where uh, I fell in love with weed. I uh, was selling weed coming from Mexico to my friends, and it's where I saw, you know, at the time it was Dare, and they were telling you all the things: good people don't use drugs. You don't need to know anything about it. And what I saw is my friends who smoked weed have better, healthier lives. Then, I mean, not like I don't drink, but I know what happened. Sure. I got kids now, and I worry about fights. I worry about DUIs. I yeah. worry about sexual assault. And there is no such... You've never heard someone say, he's a mean stoner. Yeah. Right? And like, we, our fundamental belief is that weed makes the world a better place. And so what we want to do is grow the best weed that's accessible to as many people as possible. And that's basically the foundation of why Glass House exists and why Kyle and I do what we do. And you guys have such a huge grow, right? And I remember reading some things about your technology that you guys are doing. Speak on how you guys are able to use so much technology and such a massive grow because even someone with a garage grow with six plants legally here in California, they need to use whatever. You guys have one of the largest in the world. How do you guys research that find and what is it that you guys are doing that makes it work for you right uh, yeah so um i mean i guess a few things uh, as kyle kyle likes to say I'm, I'm a tech guy but i'm a tech guy by training and a weed lo a lover by passion so it's that moore's law kind of approach is twice as fast half the cost and how do you i mean we literally count seconds is how we do it is our goal is quality consistency and cost it's got to be in that order got to do it great you got to do it great every time and you got to do it great efficiently and so one of the things that we like to do is, and i think from the beginning we blended We've got our weed whisperer and we've got our can cannabis, or I'm sorry, our greenhouse operations guys. There's a lot of 25 year cannabis guys. There's a lot of 25 year greenhouse guys. The 25 year cannabis greenhouse guys, unfortunately, are in prison, right? And so that's one of the things that we're trying to do is get them out. But we, what we really did is took those two expertises and put them together. And we steal a lot of things from, from agriculture. We don't necessarily invent that much, sure. but we see like our farm when it's fully built out, be doing something like 12 million plants a year through there right? There are other places where they deal with 12 million plants. And so we go and look, how do they do it? And how can we bring that to cannabis in a way that either improves or keeps quality and allows us to do it more efficiently? So, you know, for example, we have these things in our nursery called ebb and flood floors. I'm not sure anyone's ever done it in cannabis before. And what it allows us to do is we can, it's basically like a two inch deep rice paddy. We can, we can irrigate 28,000 plants by computer without a person consistently keeping the leaves dry and then we drain the water and the fertilizer back down clean it and then put it on the bay next to it so it cuts the labor improves consistency and quality in the plant and i mean we're saving 15 grand a week and not wasting the fertilizer because we're able to keep recycling it so we just try and find those places where we can make capex investments to improve quality and reduce our opex and and the thing that that we are passionate about is we we think the legal market is the way to go we think you know, providing people tested product is the better way. And so, you know, there are some amazing craft cannabis growers out there. We're not that. Let's be clear. There, you know, some of the stuff that's grown in the Emerald Triangle, some of the stuff that's grown in, in a warehouse in Los Angeles, amazing. What we think we can do is, is we can beat the illicit market just on price. So you can basically, we believe very, very soon, we'll be able to provide legal weed at illegal prices. 
Wow. And when you say that, what is someone looking at going, okay, glass house brands, if I wanted to pick up an eighth, what is it usually retailing? I mean, you guys are selling it to them, but what, what is it usually going for on the shelves? So, so we have a couple brands. Um, we have glass house farms and then we have a recently launched all's well, which is like even more of a value brand. So, you know, kind of the all's well, all's well is the yeah, name of the brand. So that's a good one. And I'll give you an example. All's well gummies. You can get 10, 10, 10 milligram gummies out the door. Taxes paid for 10 bucks. Right, I mean that—that's a better buzz than you can get that's from a good. Heineken, and most importantly, okay. that's how many milligrams are those? That's 10, 10, 10, million, 10, 10 milligrams. Yes, yeah, so you got Ooh, 100 milligrams for for great. 10 bucks, yeah. right? I mean that's that's a lot of fun for a dollar, um, and it's the same price as you would get from an illicit market, right? And that's a great is, sleeping pill right there. You know what I mean? It's like at you night, know, if you, you know want some for a buck, come on. You know what's you know where it's been made. You know what's been tested. You know the dosage is going to be the same. I mean, I love it when we go to New York, Washington Square Park, filled with people, but they you have no. I mean, you literally have no idea what's in that, right? Until you see your brand out there, you're like, wait a minute, how did they get here? Wait a minute, that looks just like mine. They bought it for 10 at the store they turned and sold it for 30 in new york exactly. has it happened to you guys yet when oh, you guys yeah, show up places it's like wait a minute how is our stuff here i mean new york's got 4400 illegal dispensaries and four legal ones the illegal dispensaries are giving people what and they only want three are open yeah <laughs> they, they actually i just saw the tax number they did nine million in sales last month through the legal dispensaries total for the whole wow. state nine million bucks california is doing 150 million in taxes alone wow. right now right so but that's exactly what happens the illicit market gives people what they want what they want in new york is california cannabis now guys i want to ask you a question uh, about you know lights sun grown all that stuff what you guys have going at your facility for our listeners because they may or may not know it's cannabis talk 101 we'll get that when we get back we'll be right back all right now. We want to work with people that are going to be here for a long time, making pre-rolls, making cartridges, making tinctures, and we want to help them expand and do a great job in the state and be able to deliver on time. But we don't have a minimum. We help everybody. I don't know what you're going to do in the future. So there's no small order or small client because tomorrow you might not be a small farmer. You might be a large farmer. Our biggest thing is we're going to give you red carpet, white glove service. People can get in contact with us at info at bearflagcali.com. Are you ready to live the life you crave, you guys, folks, at Elevation Nations? They have created a community where authenticity and adventure meets curiosity, a space for members to explore culinary adventures, travel, cannabis, wine culture, and unforgettable experiences, providing access to an exceptional life full of elevation and inspired seasons. You guys, at Elevation Nations, membership is a key to having it all. Just visit Elevation nations.com to discover the new possibilities we are here with the gentlemen from glass house brands kyle and graham blue was asking you guys a question about lights and everything else that you guys use because you guys are producing so much so much i mean yeah. are you guys if i'm not mistaken producing the most cannabis out of california absolutely I yeah, no that. question. I mean, you know, in the last quarter we grew and importantly sold, which tells peop you people like it, almost 75,000 pounds of weed. So uh, we're growing quite a bit. Oh, thank you that, was yeah. that was quarter, not year. Yeah, yeah. In, thank in three you months. Yeah. Yeah. I, three I, I months, 75,000 pounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and increasing. And the amazing thing is we're selling it faster than we can grow it, right? And that's, to us, like, that's the key is you want to give – the best product for the best value and the market is the one that gets to tell you when you're right and it's when they want to buy it more even faster than you can make it now do people get upset because you're you're, you're setting the market a price obviously right i mean this is gonna you know get people upset sometimes. no are you kidding me <laughs> no everybody <laughs> loves us yeah. are you kidding me i they love don't go on my instagram and yeah. no they don't they don't blast look at the that. comments about well, this well, guy he's we, always loved well, by well, everyone yeah, right. well we got good reputation you know right here so <laughs> we'll help you guys. I don't know if we like all the bad guys that get shit on. Dude, we, I mean, listen, you know what? There's a few funny. guys that get beat up and we love them. I'm like, what do you want? Well, no, because you're doing the right thing. People yeah. are getting upset sometimes for the wrong reasons. You know what I mean? And and that's the, and and they don't understand it, and and it's unfortunate for them. But you know, I, I we look at the bigger picture. I think and. Um, and I'll give you an example, and you guys may or may not agree with this, but you know, and it's not about them today. But it's the the the, the MedMen guy, uh, Adam. You know, you know, he was the first through the door. He did a lot of things that that no one has done in this industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether he, you know, he he just recently. And we love the guy. We, I, I like him. I, <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think he's great. I, he he recently, you know, um, you know, got dismissed on his case or whatever, and and they owe made him millions money for bashing. For, him. Made millions. I can't wait for how to get millions for people bashing him. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> it's just like, and again, I, I think when you're when you're the first. one, one to do something so big that, that it allows people to expand their mind they don't understand 
And so, unfortunately, they just bark, and that, we call those guys carnival barkers. Yeah, you know, you know the, 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 the first one, th- the first one through the wall always gets bloody. That, that just That's happens. It, dude. Yeah. And and what Adam did was, I mean, we know Adam mm-hmm. as you can imagine. Um, there was some really good stuff he did, and yeah. he made it mainstream. Where I know some people that unabashedly go, uh, I just feel so comfortable in that store. It makes me feel safe. And some of the others are kind of sketch. And so he, he had his, you know, he has the detractors for sure, but um, he did a lot of good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and then I, you know, uh, on that, I think one of the things that we, we do it for the consumer, right? And sure. I think there's a lot of, a lot of the perspective is from the market or the producer, but, but this doesn't exist for the person growing it. It exists for the person smoking it, right? And so our goal is to bring the highest quality to people at the lowest cost. And well I said. think, well you know, said. you know, the, t- the thing we hear is you grow corporate booth, right? Well, I, I there's either there's either two options there. It's corporate booth and it has nothing to do with your premium grade A. Is that bad? Yeah, I, I always thought it was, I don't yeah. even know what that is. I, I thought mean, it was you, good. Like you thought it was a compliment. No, I, I, I was that, like awesome. Yeah, no, I I think it is because right. I think it's great. No, I, yeah. because oh, and, and I say this to from, people. Yeah, and, and we're you know I say this from 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 our view is that listen, eighty percent of the people cannot afford to smoke the the the, the, the Zotics and all this other stuff. Eighty percent of them can't afford it. And it helps them too, and it's medicine for them too, right? Yeah. You shouldn't have to be rich to have to smoke. So yeah. why do I always say is, okay, if, if we're not as good as your fire, then why are you worried you're about the, it? You're the Bud or, Light. You're or, Bud Light. Or, for, is, you know or are I mean? we close enough to your fire that you're scared of it, right? I mean, it's like if a Toyota goes on sale, do Ferraris get cheaper? They don't. No. So you, know, it's, you either got to yeah. take it one way. It's either I, I even look at Glasshouse brands like Kirkland. Because you guys are supplying it so big in demand, like a Costco level, where you're going, you know what, if you could buy that Nike t-shirt, or you could buy that Grey Goose, but we also have the Kirkland brand t-shirt, Sometimes and we have the I'll Kirkland brand, you know, and, and not only do I want it, I rock those all day, every day, right? I, I call us the Casamigos of cannabis. That's what we're trying to be. We want to be the best weed you can get everywhere. Yeah, I like that. I like yeah. that. So with that question that we did before, we asked before break, you know, what kind, are you guys lights, uh, sun-grown, completely both, uh, you know, mixture? How does it all work? does it look you know for the guy that has never heard anything about you guys that's yes. listening so today. we're almost in, entirely sun grown um and one of the th- reasons that kyle and i picked this greenhouse that we've been trying to buy f- since 2018 is i think it's lo- it's located in one of the best growing areas any- anywhere in the country uh, there's a reason it was an existing greenhouse there's a reason they built a five and a half million square foot greenhouse here is it's a great fucking place to grow plants you look all around 12 months out of the year they're growing plants outside Southern right? california baby right i mean and that's the thing like people in massachusetts are spending 50 grand in acre a month on electricity made by burning coal by the way to recreate what we get here in southern california for free 72 and sunny every damn day then you put Bravo. this greenhouse in there we are growing absolutely amazing weed with nothing but the one lighter in the sky it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we won't you know play around with doing the super turbo or nuclear weed like kyle calls it and add supplemental lights but we can grow great weed for free and with no environmental impact. And I think the more people understand that, the more they're gonna like it. Do you mind if I drop something that most people don't know? Let's drop it. (laughs) So we're turning on, everyone knows we're turning on another greenhouse, um, another million square feet. The one that follows that is a million square feet and it is full of high pressure sodium lights, which are indoor lights. Let's go. And we have three power plants and a solar plant on site. So our cost, one, we mm. don't need air conditioning. Mm. We can use the ocean air off Malibu mm-hmm. to cool it. But two, our cost for those lights. So we can have the sun, which is the better full spectrum than those high pressure sodium. But then we can just beam and really light it up. And it's going to cost us a little less than five cents a kilowatt. Love it. So the largest indoor is going to be glass house. And when I say nuclear, it's like, why would you want to put a roof over that? Where <laughs> exactly. I, an ag professor I hired back in 2014, I said, why is everybody growing indoors? Well, it's because the cops forced them inside. Mm-hmm. But he said, those lights are trying to recreate perfect, which is the sun, and they can't yet. You get the full spectrum. So to me, I said, Graham, this isn't indoor. This is nuclear. We're going to be able to just grow the most amazing cannabis at the largest indoor facility, 1 million square feet at the cheapest possible electricity. So we think we can even bring indoor pr- indoor flower to people at a at a When is that coming, price. Kyle? I would say middle of next year is when he'll start harvesting, uh, actually start planting. So towards the end of next year. Mm-hmm. And one point, I have a 22-year-old and I don't coddle. He's a <laughs> he's a great kid. He's at work right now. Um, and he loves weed. His friends all love weed. Problem is, dad doesn't give him glasshouse weed. You know, sometimes I'll say, hey, try this, sometimes try that. For the most part, it's like, hey, man, go get your own weed. 
Right. You know? Yeah. So all's well help come when I said, Graham, these kids are having illegal weed delivered to my house. It feels a little weird. <laughs> but they said, they said, he was like, Dad, we can't afford the cannabis. It's too expensive for us. Yeah. So when we came out with all's well, it's like, look, it's not as good as, um, the, the gummies are not as good as our plus gummies. They're better. You guys have earned the right to go buy plus gummies. You guys should have top shelf tequila. Your kids probably should start and appreciate the top shelf when they can afford well, he, it. Well, here's the thing, Kyle. To be honest with you, I don't want that top shelf. I don't want to be that high. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't like like, you know. It doesn't need to have a high THC no, to be like. Oh, this like, is like, great. I, you know, in fact, for for me, listen, I, you know, I, I'm gonna, you know. I'm not saying this to do what I think is right. I'm doing it because it's what's good for me. Yeah. You know, and and and, and I, I I sincerely mean this is that some of the stuff that's out there is too potent for me. I don't want to get that blasted. Well, well blue. You know? to, to, we're a, you're ahead of the game already because most people just care about THC content. What I'm yeah. saying is, the gummies that we sell for you know basically a buck a gummy are not as good as our plus. It's not about THC content. It's just they're not as good quality. They're, they're great quality for what you're getting. Sure. And the all's well flour is not the same you're going to get in Glasshouse Farms. We're going to put our best flour into that because we don't want that same flour at a different price point. But that said, it's still really good. And so you're, I think you're getting the best possible flour for the price. Mm -hmm. And someday on the indoor, for those that just have to be that aficionado, they've got to have the best watch, the best shoes, everything else. And I know a lot of professional athletes that just go, is that indoor? If you can say yes, and it's a Rolex to them. So to us, it's like, okay, and it doesn't have to be the highest quality C THC, sure. it, or, I mean, the highest level. We agree with you on that, but the market right now does want that, so we have to also respect the market. Yeah, well, I can't wait till that stops. Well, I think, <laughs> I think that, that that's only here for a short period of time, and, and, I, and I think that's because of the, the training Right, the, it's the hype on everybody saying, "What's yeah, the level this of is, this is that? not enough of us speaking out loud about what's real, right? Because you know, you we, speaking about it is huge, right? Yeah, and I don't I, often I don't even bring it up like this because it was just never brought up. It's always I got the best, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. and and I'm sitting here thinking like, damn, I, and thirty eight like, percent. Yeah, you want to hit this? I'm like, no, nah, I'm <laughs> cool, bro. There's all kinds of this and that. I, I'm all right off that. I don't want that in my life. I'm, so blue, I'm if I bring you a bottle of wine, old, are you gonna go? How much alcohol is in yeah. that? Is no. it is it yeah, twenty? Right. No, I, yeah, I just you know. <laughs> if it was, wouldn't you actually be bummed, right? What what yeah. if, what if well, well, beer was as strong as Everclear? Well, that wouldn't be yeah, better, you'd, right? You'd be you don't, you'd be drink this much, right? And I think two things. One one is most great people, analogy. One people who think they don't like cannabis, most of them have been overserved. They got too stern. Right? It's the equivalent. One hundred percent. You walk in, you have your first drink. Someone gives you a shot of Everclear. It's not going to be a good experience. The other thing is, I think if you focus on flavor and the terpenes. If you enjoy, if it tastes good, you actually want lower potency. I would rather smoke three times as much 10% weed as one one thing of 30% weed. Because I can get there. Because, and because it's I don't want to be and I'm using stuck it, there. Yeah, using it yeah. for the medicine that it should be for, right? So if you want to smoke something and go work out, you want to be able to not be so blasted where you right. want to just smoke something like you do at night and you want to crash out, you know? There's the different level of, of THC levels that people should use as what I like to call this medicine, right? There's the wake and bake. There's the yeah. middle of the afternoon, which could be maybe the same. And then there's that nighttime one. And most people like the indicas at night yep. when i talk to people like that i go you know what you're really utilizing this plant to be what it's for and when i see companies or people that go oh i use this for that this for that this for that i'm like this person is using this medicine for themselves mm -hmm. to use it properly rather than just and there's some that like that og hardcore all day every day yeah, because it keeps them right because they're ADHD, because whatever yeah. they get all angry cool if that works for you yeah. god bless you yeah. but at least you know it there was yeah. a time i was like that though yeah exactly you know I mean? me too and, i needed the hard i needed it was I me it was me when i was blunts. 19 20 25 the younger people you know, need us something hard to kick yeah. them calm them down i mean but, our, our tagline for pl our plus gummies is find your just right and i think that's the key right whatever it is for you and whatever time and whatever you're doing you want to find that balance you don't want to be too far you don't want to be not far enough and i think it's exactly what you're saying i agree 100 percent. if my son was on this with his buddies so all of a sudden it's four guys that are of a different age they probably are talking about Everclear. And yeah. they're talking about getting, you know, they don't have a lot of cash, they so they want to get to where they want to get to. I just want to get up there as quick well, as I can and, and yeah. as long yeah. as I can for as cheap as I can. Not, all, not, not only that. <laughs> he also and got, you're saying that's the way you think yeah. when you're younger. Yeah, but none of them have sprained their ankles sleeping. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I woke up with my arm, my elbow. <laughs> you were hey, hey, talking every night with the weird. I'm like, what's wrong? My I almost shoulder. got a cramp yesterday, well, for God's sake. I got to do a After sleep work study oh, just to see what's going on with my elbow. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Listen, uh, it's, it's, it's awesome talking to you guys. When we come back, we're going to discuss uh, the high five with uh, this young man because we haven't done it oh, with him Oh, Graham yet. needs to do the so, high five, yes. Yeah, and trust me, you're going to like and it. And I want to uh, hear how you guys actually re- you know, got together. I don't even know the story. That's his, that's yeah. Mean that he just good. reaches his hand and just grabs yeah, my nuts? Yeah, because you guys are... Don't be grabbing my nuts. Yeah. When he yeah, put his hand in your nut and your good. cup like that and grabbed your nuts, I was like, grab my nuts. <laughs> Closer than I thought for not living so close together. We'll be right back and find out how this love relation started. <laughs> it's corn nuts. We'll be right back. <laughs> FX's full and broad spectrum hemp extracted products contain CBD, CBG, and some 1,300 other elements and are naturally derived substances from the hemp and the plant. You guys, check out the tinksters, the waters, the topicals, and vape collections. Go feel the effects with Cali FX. Check them out online, CaliFX.com. I want to thank everybody around here that makes it all happen. Marcos Mondo, Teddy the Show Dog, Jessica, Daniel, Diego, Cam, Connor, Beach Bar, Salar, Ali, Goldie, Brother Pitt, Mark Carnes, Chris, Frank, Kino, Jennifer, Erica, and Elvis. Thank you guys all thank you guys, you guys we love you we love to you make all, this man. happen as graham said about this show set and everything what'd you say earlier i said that, i mean thank you to all those people because this place is I'm, i just want to hang out here this place has got the, one of the coolest vibes I mean, it's definitely the nicest Wait show ever been on, man yeah this, you guys we're actually having a party here this saturday you should this come saturday, you, you should, you should really kill it i wouldn't miss a party here this no this saturday we're awesome. supposed to have a good one this guy ran it out what's it called the it, it, it's mad the, flavor fest mad flavor fest third annual uh event we rent our our facility out to uh, anywhere from Activision, you know, which is a, a gaming company. Glasshouse Farms branch should be doing uh, something anybody, here. Anybody who, you know, and the corporate ca- cannabis heads or um, even, you know, just some geek off the street. You know, we, we, we have it up in different sites where they can Birthdays, our, quinceaneras, yeah, yeah. bar mitzvahs, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> they, no, they, they do. No, seriously. We almost had a wedding here the other night. Uh, the guy was begging to get the place, and then he ended up getting another place, which I saw the other location was much you know better for his wedding well, i can see why if it they wanted like a fun smoke. place to hang oh it is and awesome. it's it's everybody here that makes it so good and yeah. the vibe is right speaking of vibes that's right and everything else that happens kyle and graham how did you guys meet because for you to reach over and be brothers like you are <laughs> and kyle to be like wow i didn't know we were that close <laughs> <laughs> i guess we are graham and i Joe, know it's stop exactly. it. blue and i are like i said <laughs> we share popsicles together so you know it's i, I get the feeling <laughs> but how did you guys meet and i know it's you been tell, about seven plus start. years that you've been with the company where did you guys find each other and i know kyle you're the co-founder of the company so you had to bring him on how did what did you see in this young man <laughs> the y- young man yeah uh, <laughs> thank you for that yeah <laughs> um you, you know it was a uh, a terrible investment that i made <laughs> no 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 i feel like i went to high school <laughs> with this guy <laughs> no i put a, I put a bunch of money in and uh into that first hundred fifty thousand square foot oh, i thought farm. you meant him i was yeah. like that's awesome <laughs> roi sucks yeah, yeah. No, it, yeah i don't want to grab my nuts again um, <laughs> so, um so, so i brought some friends and i go i am so screwed i can't believe i invest this money and let me suffice to say one dude had been indicted for conspiracy to commit homicide on his ex-wife <laughs> another guy was a disbarred attorney who represented suge knight on youtube nice i mean there were some real you got a nice team around you yeah <laughs> neither one of those were me and so i just i called a few of my buddies some orange county folks had made a, a gritty made a lot of money i say hey, get in the car laugh at me but tell Please me partner. what and so i'm dealing with these guys and they're like well two takeaways or well, three takeaways one you're kind of fucked <laughs> two we really like this farm. And three, this Graham guy that was like a breath of fresh air that was part of this quick tour that I, you know, of this property I'd invested in. And quickly I got to know Graham. And they all said, by the way, if you did something here, because we know you've cleaned up tough stuff, 
you we put money in i was like wait what you were that <laughs> impressed with this and so then i quickly said i've got to meet graham and talk to him and and quickly we just started working together and you know he's an amazing human being like i can see you guys have a great relationship we're sort of yin yang a lot of ways i bring some skills that he doesn't have he brings skills i don't have it's important and also he's got a bit of a different temperament so um and, and so it really works well and so we've been great partners and we've been on this journey together and you know we're having we have a lot of fun we laugh at a lot of crazy shit that happens to us but um it's all you can do sometimes right it's better than crying about it yeah, yeah. And, and i'd say look it's Gotta one of those things going. where you know we became like you said brother from another yeah I love it. I love the relationship and the vibe. You can tell. And then even you guys saying you guys don't do shows together that much because you both are separated doing your different things, which is good. So are you more on the farm then? Yeah. So I'm up in Santa Barbara, which is where we had our first farms. And now our Camarillo farm is close to that. So I'm, I'm really focused on the making it part. So the cultivation, supply chain, manufacturing is, is where I live. Kyle and I tag team a, a lot on the public market stuff. So, you know, the whole going public thing, which was if you thought cannabis was hard, then you throw going public on top of that. It's yeah. like, you you know, every day is Monday, every week's a year. Um, but we slogged our way through that and I think, you know, did a, did a great job. So it's kind of blending that plant touching side with the business side and Kyle's on the balance sheet fundraising side and the, and the business side. And we just, like you said, bring that yin yang together to make it make it all flow. Can I can I share a fun, a fun story with you guys? Yeah, please. So about 13 years ago, um, you know, I, I built the brand Cannabis Talk 101, you know, and, I, and, and you know, I had to uh, invest it in a... Uh, a publicly traded company and the guy the guy duped me right he got me for uh, you know it, it i got a million a couple million shares or something like that in the company and for you know like 50 grand or something and then one day it's been about a year or two and and i just opened the cannabis talk 101 and he comes in he's like hey you know i'm gonna give you those that money back and and you know let me buy those shares back it's been like two years and i haven't seen anything on it so i'm like yeah whatever you know he's like but i'm gonna give you you know a half a million of the shares i'm gonna give you the money back half a million shares in this motorcycle it's dennis rodman it's in the back of my truck right now <laughs> literally comes flying to my house in the middle of the night you know i've known the guy for a long time so i'm like yeah no problem you know and um so i'm like yeah whatever i'll take the 50 grand and and the motorcycle and half a million shares that you're gonna give me back tomorrow you know so you takes off and leaves and two days later the shares go up to a dollar 70 a share from three cents a share to a dollar 70 and then and uh. so so in my mind i'm like this guy actually pulled it off right so i'm like you know i'm i'm gonna take cannabis talk one one public this is 12 years ago i didn't even have a company i mean I, I i barely had built the set and i didn't even know what i had or what i was doing yet or how to monetize it just you know just coming you know i kind of out of the 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 gray area into the light saying, look, I, I got to do something, you know, right. I had bought a few licenses and, or I, I had a few licenses that I had sold, you know, uh, in the, in the industry. Cause I had them since way back in, you know, and uh, long story short, you know, that was my public stint. And then I ended up spending a hundred and like 50 grand of my own money um, into trying to go public and then realizing that you know I, I i just as i'm trying to go public there's this public thing if you want to go public on the tv right during shark tank you know <laughs> it's god I, talking I, to yeah, me yeah, I need yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like here you need how much money Seventy thousand. here's fifty thousand. next thing you know i'm like these guys are clowns dude mm. i'm you know finally i met some good people they're like look dude you don't even have revenues you have no business you know like don't do this but my buddy just did it for you know so i you know and he screwed me and it's just you know but it was it was a good learning lesson so i do understand it a little bit but i know that you know once you start getting into it it's a it's a big tall order you know you have to really have you have a fiduciary responsibility to to take care of those shareholders to to report to not report to you know to create a, a machine and it's very difficult but uh, you know I, I and i commend you guys for actually taking the time to 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 come in our industry use your guys's knowledge provide a, a product that is is reasonable for the everyday consumer um that's very difficult to do and then not try and cut corners because you you have to be as, as 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 transparent as you can be with with the public company. So thank you guys for bringing that to the hey, table. You're in the public it's, eye it's all the stuff. time too for doing that, and you guys have been doing it successfully for seven plus years, if I'm not mistaken. Kyle, something I want to touch on though. You've been getting beat up a little bit online about being a cop, about this and that, about the propaganda of which I call propaganda because I feel like Wait a I second, know you're you. A cop? He, he was, <laughs> and all the bullshit about you know. He's a cop. He arrested people for cannabis and this and that. 
I want you to speak on that now so people could hear your side. I've heard it. I know you. I, we've talked about it off air, this and that. But yeah, please, g- give it a platform now because I think you're an asshole too. For me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the, no, uh, I don't actually. I'm I kidding when that. I say that. Explain your side to the <laughs> scenario that somebody goes, that guy from Glass House Brands is, is a fucking narc. He's over there. He didn't do that bullshit. And he was arresting people. And now he's selling cannabis. He's capitalizing on everybody and blah, blah, blah. That's kind of the moral of the story, right? In a nutshell. Mm-hmm. Who? You're who the fed outlet, that, well, outlet said that I, I don't know exactly who, but I know he's got caught in it. And I've heard from several cats. And oh, Kyle the, and I have talked about the barkers. The, the you talked barkers. about the yeah, and, 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 and it's out there enough not to where anything. if people yeah. are listening... They may even say to us, dog, like, you know me, Joe, why you guys have that guy on? Nah. He's this and that. But then I'll defend him myself personally. I love when people ask me that personally, like they did it with the uh, uh, Medman. Uh, bro, um, what is his name? Adam. Adam. Like, why? Adam? I go, dude, you don't even know this dude, Adam. You got to see what he's done. Same thing with you, Kyle. I've had a few conversations with people like, dude, what do you mean? He's only arrested one person. Like, so please, I don't need to tell your story. You, t- you defend yourself. Yeah. So, look, if someone just says... I've had bad bad experience with law enforcement and all cops are bastards. I get the ACA. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I can't, I'm not going to sway you. You don't like cops. Period. I get it. Then, you know, the, it is what it is. You know, uh, I was in, as you mentioned, after my basketball career, which I did a lot of this, by the way, I was quite good at, at cheering. Um, <laughs> You know, I was hey, gonna, to make the team at USC, dog, you got to be a player. You, know hey, I mean? you ain't gonna get on the squad if you. That's D one. There was a day. Um, yeah, but children, meow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're God, good. I love You're it. Good. We're losing. I can't. In our own game. Um, you, you know, I was an inner city school teacher, special ed teacher in South Central Los Angeles during the Rodney King riots. Yeah. My wife thought that was more dangerous than when I was a police officer. From there, for five years, I was a I was a police officer. I worked patrol. I wore gangs, and I was a drug recognition evaluator. I was heavily involved in the drug war. What city? The city of Torrance. Oh, yeah. And, um, and so I made a lot of arrests mainly for methamphetamine, uh, methamphetamine, heroin, things like that. And, you know, as a young police officer, I was trying to do a good job, and I thought by getting a lot of felony arrests, taking guns off the street, taking gang members off the street, it would be a, it'd be a good thing. Cannabis was not my focus. And I did make one cannabis arrest as a secondary charge to methamphetamine. That was not my focus. I was never in the can- the Emerald Triangle. You might want to tell where, how that arrest came to be. I think it's a- <laughs> so so. And and a lot of times, you know, I would tell people we only catch the dumb ones. And so it was. I was a graveyard officer at one p.m. one a.m. on a Saturday night. I'm sitting at a red light, and a big old uh, beater. Uh, Ragtop comes up and there's a guy and he's got a full size cannabis plant in the back seat. <laughs> and, and so he's I, got his baby rolling with him. Yeah. So I and, I, and this is 25 years ago where it's a pretty different. This is like 1997. Rolling down point, the street. So, the yeah, yeah. Right. And so, and so I look at him and, and uh, the cars around us, everybody's laughing and pointing and stuff like that. So I look at him and I look at him and he gives me a full on salute. And I'm like, dude, could you just pull over? Can we just talk for a second? And I'm just like, if I don't do anything, then it's going to be a problem. Right. And so I end up, he had methamphetamine on him. We ended up taking him to jail for that. And that was a secondary charge. And I said to him, could you just lay it down, put it in the trunk? <laughs> like, you, you put me as a police officer in a bad place. Sure. That, that's just dumb. Um, and so towards the end of my career, when I was, you know, my short five-year career, you know, I, I became close with a lot of the folks that were using methamphetamines and they would call me and we'd talk and they would ask for one asked for treatment and I was like holy crap it never hit me that I don't have that on my tool belt I got jail I got handcuffs I just put them into the into the kind of prison industrial complex and so when I left to go do my own businesses and I left on great terms with with the police department there was no issues or scandals or anything um I was asked a few years later by law enforcement against prohibition or leap. What did I think about the drug war? And I said, it is a complete waste of time. It's a war on people, not drugs. And it's a war on poor people. And if you want to look at the demographics, yeah, it is black and brown people. 100%. Hell yeah. And so they said, would you speak out about it? And I said, I will absolutely speak out about it. I called the chief of Torrance PD. I called him and I said, listen, you're going to start seeing me, CNN, Fox, all that, and I said, look, I still support the police and their mission to answer 911 calls. And I risk my life more than one time going in there when I hear screaming inside a house that we get called to, and you can't wait. And I just like go in, kick the door, and try and help some woman getting beaten. And so 
there was a lot of good I did that I think most of society would say, God, that's really nice you do that and thank you for risking your life. But on the drug war, it was a mistake. And I've been speaking out for five, uh, three times the time that I was a police officer about it. Not because any other reason than I think I owe it to society and also I see it as kind of penance for what I did because it really didn't help those people. It didn't really help the citizens of Torrance who were paying my salary. It just took me out of the field for for somebody hurting themselves and I could have waited in line at, at McDonald's. Someone's going to hurt themselves with that. There's to me... <laughs> In some ways, there's no real difference to it. And so where people, and then when I got in the industry, it was by happenstance where people were Googling me and they saw that I raise money for projects and that I'm fighting for legalization of cannabis and people started asking, would I invest in that? And at first it was no, 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 I'm putting a target on your back and I don't want that. But after a while, I started going, this could be a really big industry. And so the, it just piqued my interest. And at some point, I decided it was time to invest. But, you know, I, no, I was not out there and I was not out there arresting for cannabis. But at the end of the day, what's the difference? Because I'm arresting somebody for a product they want to put in their own body. So I think we're splitting hairs. I think the drug war is wrong. Uh, we speak out about it. I think the 2,700 cannabis prisoners sitting in federal prison right now is an absolute travesty. And we have a president that said he would let them out and he hasn't let out one. He gets mad at one basketball player that violated Russian law, happy she's home, but that's Putin's jail. What about yours, President Biden? Yeah. And so we take that very seriously and we work with Mission Green and, and I sit on the board of Mission Green and, and Weldon Angelos. And it's not to, you know, the naysayers are the naysayers. We do it because it's the right thing to do. And we were proud that when they finally let somebody out, and it wasn't Joe Biden, it was a good attorney who got Luke Scaramazzo out, who did 15 years yeah. for running a legal Modest, a dispensary in our state of Modesto. Uh, exactly what company. we do. 15 years. It's, uh, it, it's it is crazy. Travesty. And I remember you making a shirt that said nobody should be in prison for uh, plant. selling a plant. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I have the white sweater with the green it's letters awesome on it. I you. still love it. I wore it in, uh, well, I was in Palm Springs the other day and it, I had it on. Shout out to Marcus Malone who yeah. came up with that. I love Marcus and, Malone. Shout out to Kicks and Cannabis, yeah. his, his podcast. And, too. And, and the other thing, on, uh, I interrupt Kyle a little bit on there. Luke Scarmazzo, uh, 15 years for doing exactly what we do. Thanks to Mission Green, a great attorney. Gla uh, Kyle's on the board of Mission Green. Glasshouse donated to it. Luke Scarmazzo is now uh, three weeks out of out of prison. We hired him as a Glasshouse brand ambassador. So now he's working with us, making a salary, which is a hard thing to do. He's still a felon, right? He's still on parole, even though he's out. So now he's got a job. He's an ambassador for Glasshouse. He's a, we were able to support him as an advocate. I mean, Kyle's gone on his own dime to Atlanta to speak uh, at a sentencing hearing uh, for a guy named Ali, who was, I mean, he he's in jail for we probably drop more weed on the floor each day than he's in jail for kyle went out there to speak to the federal judge which is i think a place where having the police you know credentials is actually super helpful right and being sure. white let's being, just face it you need to be who those people need to see some people can hear it and some people can't being able to hear it from an ex-cop i think carries a lot more weight when you're standing i like that room. kyle uses yeah. his privilege like that and i and i know i say this not because you said it before too and it's I love when white folks stand up like that going, no, we're going to use our privilege in the right, right way. Like, uh, well, you know, yeah, there's I'll a lot of cats out there that are doing that. And for you, Kyle, to do that baffles me when I see the bad things or when I talk to you and like, oh, my God, I can't believe somebody say that about you. What, do you not see what this guy is standing up for on TV going against all the cops and everybody else? Not, you know, totally going at, against. At, but at the end of the day, if every cop had to change their heart like Kyle did and went from what he was doing to helping get people out, isn't that exactly what we want? How well, can you get mad at that? That's I agree. What we're say, asking for. I'll say this. Listen, I, you know, it, 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 people have to know this, right? And this is very important to, to, to what Kyle's saying is, you know, I, I, I had a very intimate relationship with the with the street life, right? Torrance, I know Torrance, like, you know, it's a, it's a rough area. You got Lennox, you got all kinds of, you know, tough areas around it. You know, uh, it could be a tough area. It could be a nice area, depending on where, where you're, you're um, at. You know, the cops on the street, you know, they're not taking down the, the guys that are, you know, moving hundreds and thousands of pounds of marijuana. If you get caught by a street cop, it's because you're a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it's straight up. You like I always, I always you have knew. a weed pa I, my plant in the back of your convertible. <laughs> correct. Yeah, my friends would be like, "Yo, dude, you know, aren't you afraid of getting busted by the cops?" I'm like, "Not at all. I'm not worried about the cops at all. I'm worried about the feds." You know, because I, I don't care the cops. The cops are cool. They're they're gonna pull up, pull me over and be like, "Yo, you got some weed?" And it's like, "Yeah, cool." 
you know, get the fuck out of here. Like 90% of the time in the, in the neighborhoods that we grew up in, like the cops don't give a shit about weed. They're cops like, they pull my weed. blunt out of the car when yeah, they took like, my you car. Weed in the car. Can I get that blunt? Yeah, yeah, cool. Thank you. You know, I've been pulled over with pounds of weed in the car. The cops are like, yo, this is all you got? It's like, yep, you sure? Like, I'm positive. Blow through my whole car and be like, get the fuck out of here. Okay, cool. But that's in the neighborhoods I grew up in, which is tougher neighborhoods. You know, so so when it comes down to the guys that are doing prison, you know, that we're really trying to fight for, let's be honest. You're talking about people that kicked in the door. The feds came in. Detectives came in. It was a much higher mm -hmm. level, and I'm not trying to... Not you know, all of them, though. Some are some bullshit ones, No, I I'm mean, sure. if you got if you got in a, if you got in a, a domestic fight in your house, and he had to kick in the door, and there was cannabis there, which I've heard that story, yeah, you, you're the dumbass. You're the dumbass that did. You know what I'm saying? But, but I'm spouse. saying, if, if you were moving weight like, like I, you know, allegedly was you know you know what happens is is you get ran up on by the feds you don't get ran up on by the you know or the dea or somebody's coming in you know what i mean it's not the it's not it's not a uh, it's the not a cop. patrol cop is no driving dude, the, the patrol shit, cops yeah. over there just trying you know safe, trying to yeah. keep your mom from getting beat you know yeah. what i mean that's a different cop so even that statement that people are saying it's just real uneducated and it's a blanket statement so i could i could rock with that so i'm trying to clear his name because i hear it and see it and when i talk to you i know the difference i disagree with know? anybody saying that about kyle all day every day i got your back brother anytime in this platform has i'm still your back. thinking Thank about you. a kyle but you know high five graham with you yeah. how many different products <laughs> does glass house brands have uh i mean we probably have about a hundred different SKUs if you count like all the different strains and the main thing Glasshouse Farms is, is our kind of flag brand that we started with um, and we have uh, then we have All's Well which is the value brand that we just launched we have Field Extracts plus Gummies which is uh, I think the number three gummy brand in the state now which is awesome we just did a relaunch on it we have some sleep SKUs that are amazing we have a, a new THCV product that's awesome and we're just about really? to really yeah it's a THCV if you haven't fucked around with that I've it's heard like, I've never really cool. tried it's, it yet. it's like if you want the energy go for a hike get the room you yeah. know, clean your house kind of thing. Really? And we have a new one that has wait, wait. without the munchies. Yeah, without oh, it's an like appetite that. suppressant too. Is it an oil or is it a flower? Uh, it's, it's, it's a cannabinoid. It's t tetrahydrocannabiverol is what it stands for. Uh, and we extract it and then we put it in these uh, in these plus gummies. And we have a new one that's got like nootropics How many in it. Like 10 grams? 10, 10? Uh, that one is, it's a, let's see if I can do this by memory. I think it's five grams of THCV four grams of THC and then it's got some nootropics and things like that as well. Like it's like little a real buzz. It's got a little yeah, zippity. Yeah, little, uh, that's little the one zip. I like. I love that. Yeah. Not, no, not, not on CBD. that one. Not on that one. Okay. We do have a you, you know my boy is wicked smack. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, he's wicked, man. <laughs> we, and our, I mean our sleep gummies are like uh, and anybody who takes a Xanax more than you know once every once in a while should definitely try these sleep gummies xanax is super addictive not good for you these things work just as well it's just from the plant it's amazing there are no side effects like i can't uh, I need to get my wife some of those. She need to take something every night. They're so good. And then we have our uh, jellyfish, which is a special, like, I don't know, we call it the, the magic drops. I mean, everything from people, you know, you just got your root canal, your end of life with cancer, uh, Parkinson's. Like, it's an absolutely amazing plant. We're the only one that grows it. I don't know. I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, and then we have All's Well, which is, uh, it, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Mama Sue, which is our kind of health and wellness uh, tinctures as well. So we got a pretty good list of products. I love there. your guys' names. Jellyfish, All's yeah. Well. Mama Sue. <laughs> there is a Mama Sue. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I love yeah. them. I, they're great names. Yeah. How did you guys come up with them? Who, who do they refer to? So, um, Glasshouse is actually it's an old, House, old school yeah. name for right. a greenhouse. So right. that's where that started. And we also really liked because we're, our goal is to have indoor quality at basically, you know, greenhouse costs. And so it has, it kind of encompasses the house idea. It's also glass. It's transparent. It's clean. So it's sun grown. It gives you that idea. Right. That's, right. Oh, it kind of puts so all that together. Yeah. Uh, Plus was a company we bought. So I actually don't know where that name came from. And all's well is really just meant to be exactly what it says. All's well, baby. All's well. That baby. one's great. Take that one. You're all's well. That one. Uh, I think our marketing department gets the credit for that. Man. But, uh, how many employees? We, we did. Yeah. 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 We're not here. We <laughs> no, did everything. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, we started this. How many people now are under the branch? Under the... How many people you guys think uh, you guys have? I think have? we probably have about 450 people now. Are you yeah. counting all the, everybody, everybody? Yeah, I mean, that's just the company. And then we have a lot of contractors that work at the farms and things like if that. If you add in every head yeah. and every nice person that's there, it's, it's well over 500 people. Yeah. Wow, yeah. you guys are That's growing great. strong. I love it. I and love they still the company, don't do nothing with us, huh? I know, huh? <laughs> What's going on? I, I, I mean, know. Kyle, <laughs> we got to be cash flow <laughs> positive. <laughs> when we're cash flow positive, and and we've said we're going to be in the second quarter. Yeah. Uh, it's good. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you, you mentioned being public, and one of the things about being public is. You, 
you, you have a fiduciary duty. A lot of people, are, everybody who buys our stock is putting their faith in us to sure. do the right thing for them. And so always, what, you know, we wake up and put our feet on the ground to shareholders first, plant lovers second, trying to build a company where people enjoy to work and make products that people love. And if you can, if you can do that, then all the good stuff comes, including being able to ramp up those marketing budget, budgets and do even more social, social support. So first we make the business work and then we can make the business work for so, everyone else. So you want us to be though. losing money Everybody that's investing and and they see us on social media smoking out and having a good time with you guys, this is this is the year that we we turn yeah, the corner turn officially. The corner. Yeah. So it's a whole different day. And then it's like if we could promote it. Um, you know, well as I said, we we think what you guys are building here is really special. What you've built is already special, and it's going to be even yeah. much. It's going to be much bigger. Yep. Yeah, we appreciate that. And honestly, I think we 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 came into this and 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 I, you know I'll actually say I I came into this you know building something that was. Uh, responsible, you know, it's because my dad died, and and on my dad's deathbed, he was he was you know, such an advocate for for this plant. Taught me about this plant since I was a kid. It's never been illegal in my home, um, and you know, it's it caused a divorce in my family. I think my mom and dad separated because of it. Wow. But yet, and, but and yet, my mom, <laughs> and but my mom at one point comes back and it's like, my gosh, this is like, uh, you know, you know, you know, something that you made cool before it was cool, and now I understand it, right? And now and, she's and in the game. Understand my pops, and on my dad's deathbed, you know, he he quit. Uh, you know all the pills that the the the, the VA was giving them um, to to just go strictly to cannabis and had a better quality of life. I physically watched it, and on his last damn near his last words to me was like, "Whatever you got to do to do it right, this is the industry that we've been in this industry our whole life. All of our family's been in this industry." He's like, "Do the right thing." You know, That's and powerful. I'm just like in, in my mind, I'm like, what the fuck's the right thing? You know, <laughs> when you say that, but it looks like it's this. It but looks yeah. like you're doing your dad proud. Well, yeah, and it's yeah, funny because when I heard his story about that yeah. and seeing what he was doing and seeing his education platform that he did, that's when I got involved too, going, dude, I'm all in with this. Let, yeah. Let's go. Let's build this because what you're doing, let me add my little bracelets to it and let me add my little touches to this <laughs> well, which thing and make it look yeah. pretty yeah. And, and make it sound a little different, whatever, whatever. But it's his he's had this vision forever which has always been my kudos to the ceo of this company being like dude this vision this dream has been going far just like your vision in the dream and now it's turning around seven years strong you guys have been dealing with it you've been public now how long two years almost uh june i think it's two yeah it's too. crazy to think that a cannabis company goes public like that before federal legalization, before anything else like that. The hoops you've had to jump through for that alone and the scrutiny you get for your past of serving and protecting, being a you know, a patron of the community, and now you get shit on apparently a couple times from some random idiots who don't understand the scenario, but you heard that, you clear that up, and now you're here to give a product out there for a very good product for a very cheap price, which everybody loves. Sure. You know, so I, I kudos to you guys to Glasshouse branches out there. We want to do the high five with you, Graham. Kyle, you too. You got to jump in there and just answer it next. But Graham, you'll go first. Simple questions, five of them. Graham, how old were you the first time you smoked cannabis and where'd you get it from? Uh, the first, I, say, I guess I can say it's the first time I smoked weed was actually when I was in third grade. My best friend uh, wow. was next wow. door. I think his, his dad, oh, you wait till you get to the end of it. Um, his dad was growing, must have been growing a plant. We found it like under in a cabinet or something. He was, I think it was literally the leaves. I mean, we're not talking buds. He was drying yeah, the leaves. Yeah. And we got, we went, you know, let's try this out. I'm pretty sure we rolled up like some, you know, drawing paper and put the leaves in there and smoked it. And it didn't go that well. So I'm not going to, like, that, that was not the time, but when it really came back around, it was really for me, it was in, in high school. And I smoked weed, and it made me feel like a better version of myself. It didn't make me hung, hang, hung over. It made me laugh. It made my friends laugh. And I was like, you know, how can I get this? I was, of course, I was a high school kid, so I didn't have a lot of money. And so the way I figured out how to do it was get a couple QPs from San Diego, make it up to Santa Barbara, where it was a bit more expensive, boom, boom. Par parcel out my eights, and had enough left to smoke. And, as, you know, it just it made my life better and made me see through the dare drug war bullshit which is if that's the problem with prohibition instead of regulation right it's like when you when you when you especially with kids when you say prohibition you say the answer is no and you don't need to know anything else right and that's kids don't do that that's not how it works with regulation you can say hey it's okay for uh, grown-ups and here's why people use it and here's why kids might even use it for medical reasons and here's how you could recognize if you're having an issue with it so you can de develop a healthy relationship with it and that is so much better for society and for kids and so i wanted to be a part of that one of my main goals has been 
to break the stigma. And I feel like people who, everyone smokes weed, but they hide it, right? The judges are smoking weed, but they hide it. The only guy not hiding it's panhandling at 7-Eleven. So can you get mad at society when they think that the two things are connected? So I wanted to be a guy who's a parent and business guy and aggressively open and advocating for the plant because one thing I know is it makes the world a better place. You know, they got four more. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be like a little long-winded, but yeah. No, that's great. Kyle, Kyle, how old were you when you, go, you started? Uh, 15. Yeah. yeah, just so, we're drinking beers and someone brought out a, you know, they brought out a joint. A little mm, doobie. Yeah, and you know what? I, I, I liked it, and it was shitty weed. As you, you know, back then, I think it was all pretty shitty. <laughs> question you were lucky two. if you had some good ones. Yeah. yeah. Question number two of the high, it was probably my family's though. <laughs> Straight from Mexico. Uh, question number two of the high five. What is your favorite way to use a cannabis or smoke? Easy one. I smoke joints. I'm a flower guy. Nice. They, Anything they, in particular? They, uh, I tend, I tend to, I mean, I smoke a lot of our weed. I also enjoy, a, a, you know, tasting all the flavors out there on the market. I'm a little bit more of a sativa guy, um, during, at least during, you know, uh, I, I like the energy side of it, but every once in a while I can't get my brain to turn off and I hit that. Uh, we got a gorilla glue that absolutely knocks me out. And sometimes you just want to turn that off switch. And I love Did to you have just it. hit that one right now? <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's like, hey, what about you, Kyle? <laughs> Favorite way of land. You know, like Graham, yeah. I love I love flavoring different different ways and different modalities. My favorite is the jellyfish. It's super high CBD, low THC, and there's a few times a week where I'll just take it at the end of the day, kind of in excess, and it gives me a very nice high. Totally relaxed, slows my brain that's going 90 miles an hour down. Yeah. It's, it's so good. That's always fun to do. <laughs> Question yeah. number three of the high five with the folks from Glasshouse Brands. Craziest place you ever used or smoked cannabis, Graham? Uh, um, that's a tough one. Okay, you go, Kyle. I need to think for a second. Craziest place you've ever used or smoked cannabis? In a Let me tell you where I was car. trying. In a squad yeah. car. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> when he took that plant and rolled it. <laughs> <up. laughs> <laughs> Plugged it. Um, the back of that beater. Yeah, let's not get it twisted, boys. How about this? I wanted to smoke it in Tanzania this summer when I was with the family, and I was searching for. They kept on telling me how good this was, how good this was, and I couldn't find it. So that's my like, that's my white elephant. I may end up going back to Tanzania to find some. Let's go. Some mm. can. Some can. They were saying it grows in the hills. I mean, they built it up so good that that that. And you couldn't and, find it. It was a unicorn. It was a unicorn. Nice. Mm. Uh, I got stoned in the back of a wedding in a church was probably uh, probably my craziest spot. I don't know how it is. In the middle, middle of a wedding and uh, someone decided to break out the joint and we uh, passed it all the way down the pew in the back and, uh, and that was, uh, we were laughing pretty hard about that. Oh, that's pretty crazy. That's yeah. ballsy. <laughs> Question number four of the high five. What is your go-to munchie after you get high? Uh, um, man, I... Uh, I'm a fried chicken and waffles guy. Nice. I love like it's Ros and Ro butter? Roscoe's and the little grits on the side. Yeah. So one, one of my favorite things to do is smoke. Get, I love, the, again, the Gorilla Glue gives me munchies like no other. And that fried chicken, waffles, and the grits on the side. Let's go to Gower right now and yeah. go hit up the spot, <laughs> exactly. boy. You know where it is. <laughs> oh, just over there the other day. Who are you talking about? Ro Give me that Ro wing special. Roscoe's my spot. I love the yeah, place. Ros oh. There's a Roscoe's right here in Anaheim. Not too far. What about you? So I spend most of my time on keto, so I do everything I can to not, uh, but that jellyfish that I take, man, it gives me the munchies, something fierce, so I can't wait for the THCV to be included in that. <laughs> so uh, once I go off keto, then all of a sudden I'm just a wreck, and I will go, I make some habanero popcorn mm. that, that's nice and spicy, and then- You make it yourself? I do. Nice. I How do, do you make that? Explain that yeah, one. Yeah, let's do that. So let's if you, do you guys that. like spice? Of course. That's right, like, so, like I'm a habanero guy, yeah. Oh, you will be blown away. I'm trying to get Popcornopolis. The owners of those guys are friends of mine. They do sweet well, but they don't do spice. Right. And so I have some habanero mash. I put it in grapeseed oil because I can take it up high. <laughs> I put that in there. My wife starts screaming and yelling at me because- it makes the whole house stink. The whole house yep. is, and she she's can't tearing, breathe. She's, she's coughing. Oh, yes. Yeah. And th that means I'm getting close to putting in my, uh, my corn. I put three in there. They start popping. Then I put in the rest. And I shake it up, and it is. I I like it like fire, so it's pretty hot. I mean, it's like hotter than Cholula. Wow, yeah. So it's gonna be. It's gonna give you a little kick. I could take it down for those that don't have the uh, you know the cojones yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. Um, And then because I'm already off keto, then I go to the sugar, and I'll probably you know I, I become a burglar in my own house. And before <laughs> I start going, Diane, who's my wife. 
what the hell? Why is this here? Why, what are we doing here? You put M and M's in the kid. What am I gonna do? And I just go back sweet and sour. M and M's in the pantry oh, the, and the no. popcorn. With, with I'm the a popcorn, popcorn guy. It's yeah. my it's my wife's fault. I would not do it if it weren't for her. Yeah. So <laughs> always good to blame the good old wife. When in doubt, it's her fault. Question yeah. number five of the high five. The CEO Kyle Kazam, the CCO Graham Parar. Is that right? Parar, Parar. with an F. Parar yeah. uh, with an F from Glasshouse Brands in the building. Graham, if you could smoke cannabis with anyone. Dead, Dead or, or alive, alive, who would it be and why? I'm, I mean, it's, it's, it seems cliche, but like, I don't know how you pass on Bob Marley. Like, Bob Marley was the man. <laughs> he, I mean, I, there's two things that I'd love to have in my, my tombstone is he brought more music and more weed to the world. And if there's a guy who like embodies that, then I, I can't picture a better one than Bob Marley. I mean, he just seems like he was the coolest cat that you could fucking ch sit back and smoke a gigantic spliff with that I've ever seen. So. That's my easy I, I, You know, it's never a bad answer. When you Not hear people answer. say it, it's like, okay, great. What about you, Kyle? You know, that was very cliche. What are you I doing? Used to, right? I used to do that right before my clothes. Yeah. This may sound cliche, <laughs> <Yeah>. but... <laughs> I mean, you could have picked your grandfather who died. Oh, I don't know. Just like a random. I don't know, but no. That's yours, though, Graham. It's good. You know, timely would probably be, you know... Don Lamont and Tucker Carlson to like, oh, what the hell is going on? Why did we get fired? Both yeah. of those cats? That's crazy that but, they both got fired like that. I, I want to kind of hear what the hell the real story is. funny was. you say that. I'm so interested in that, too. I'm so intrigued in both of these anchors that one from Fox News, one from CNN, those two guys that are like the biggest, highest rated guys. But, oh, but if I'm being honest, because to be timely, that that will age badly on this show. They'll be like, who who, who are those two people? No, like, they're, they're big names, though, for a long time. Especially Tucker's been there for a long time. And, and Don. Don Lamont's been there for yeah. 16 or 17 years. So uh, really and truly, I would love to sit down with Elon Musk and hope we have the cone of silence, get high and hear like, what the hell is it like in all your government contracts? And then you took over Twitter. Help me understand how that went down. Well, this Kyle, thing. check this out. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is. Elon Musk! <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, amazing! How did you do it? Chill. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got another. How about, how about this? Is a bit different answer. Could we hotbox like all of Washington D.C.? Yeah. Just get all our politicians in the Capitol there and flood that thing in? Because I think if those guys actually knew what they're talking about, maybe they could actually get some work Can done. Can you imagine smoking in plant. there one day? Just somebody lighting up a joint and just get a, get busted for it, just to do it, just, just to be like. You know what, you guys, when are you guys going to realize this is, and they just lights it. They just need to know what it Somebody is. Somebody needs to do that. Right? You know what I mean? I'd love to hotbox next to, I guess, Mitch McConnell and go, yeah. dude, doesn't this feel fuck? right? <laughs> doesn't this, aren't you a better human now? Can his face get now. any more crazier yeah, though? Right. Can you even yeah. a wall? Yeah. Yeah. Turtle back in his shell. <laughs> well, guys, listen, it's been awesome having you guys on the show. Is there anything that we left out that you want to get out before we let, let you get on out of here? Yeah. How does a guy named Blue wear orange? Yeah. You know, I couldn't tell you. Is, is this orange? I thought it was blue. <laughs> he just no, wants to be seen. Blind, apparently. <laughs> well, I'm wearing blue, and my name's not yeah. blue. Well, let me ask you. If you if you if you were an orange to me, and it's around your, collar, <laughs> around your neck, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, if you are colorblind, what color is orange to you? Orange? Holy crap. Oh, That's a, blew blew my mind. Yeah, does someone yeah. have a joint in here? i got to figure that out. It's How blue, Marley, it's yeah. blue, boys. That's yeah. why I wear it. <laughs> so is there anything that we forgot before we let you guys on here other than that? <laughs> I mean, you guys are awesome. I appreciate this platform. I appreciate, appreciate you guys bringing this message. The biggest thing we can do is educate more people about weed and how it makes the world a better place. So uh, thank you guys for having us. And, you know, the war on drugs is bullshit. We all know it. It's not a war on drugs. It's a war on people and specific people. So keep doing everything we can to end that the only way it's going to go away is when society says it should well, and, so. and thanks for keeping it real and fun yeah because i'll tell you I, I when graham and i talked i was like i was on here once before and i had such a great time and you know i know we'll both say we were we were on the show when and yep. it's pretty cool yeah put this it, in the documentary it, it'll come yeah it'll come well there it is guys it's cannabis talk 101 and remember this if no one else loves you we, we do, do.